Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fight Mad podcast hosted by myself, Joe Long from Fighters Inc. as we celebrate 25 years within the combat sports industry. Our next guest, I've worked with him before. I love him to bits. He's got a lot of knowledge. He was a former amateur boxer. He got into promoting. I'd love to see him still promoting, if I'm really honest, at the bottom of my heart. And I know he's probably going to grin at me when I say that. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've got the knowledge, Mr. Spencer Fearon. How are you, Spencer Fearon? I'm good, bro. Even better for speakers to you, Joe. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long while. I've known you for you. It's like I've known you since when Jack was a lad. Um, so, you know, it's it's nice seeing other people's growth. Um, uh, like, in their business world, financially, you know I mean, economically and spiritually. I've seen a spiritual growth. So that's a nice thing for me, you know? That's lovely, Spence. I know you're a spiritual person. And I know you, you believe about, you know, karma coming round. Put out, million, put out. That's one thing you can't escape it. You can't. One thing you cannot escape is karma, right? One hundred percent. Karma's worse than child support. I tell you that now, right? You cannot <laughs> escape it. You think you can, but you cannot escape it. I one hundred percent agree with you, and I think it's magnified in in the combat sports industry. You know, whether that's boxing, mixed martial arts, traditional traditional, you know, martial arts, it, it's there, and uh, it comes back in abundance. You're not, you're not going to escape it. You can think you are going to, but you're not going to escape it. It doesn't go. It doesn't go. What you've been up to recently, Spence? T tell us what you've been up to recently. I've been really fortunate. Like, um, I'm now the sports director uh, for sports and entertainment for Metavisionaries, which is um, a, a, a new startup company. But I don't know how they've done it, but they've raised like, just under 80 million um, for, and it is about spreading, um, using the ethics of sport to help youngsters around the world um, in, a, in, a, in a kind of like, to incubate them in, a, in one big hub so they get extra curriculum learning. We're really, really fortunate with just, our first major signing is Lennox Lewis. Um, so we can do something with the Linux News League of Champions, his foundation, um, but not just have it set in one place, like just through the power of wearing your goggles, uh, we can access millions and, and hopefully billions of children around the world. Um, yeah, and there's also a philanthropic uh, side to it as well, which is going to be run. And so I'm so, so grateful to the MetaVision has reached out to me about five months ago. We've been going back and forth. You know, it goes, Joe, with contracts and stuff like that. And yeah, now we've done a big part. We've, we've started this and um, away we go. We've signed quite a few big names to it already. So I'm, I'm really grateful. But for me, on a personal level, because of my relationship with Lennox Lewis, the last man to be undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, it it really it resonates with me you know it resonates with me he got the idea and then we had to speak to like his it consultant and and they got it straight away but we've got some really really big names in it so as soon as i jump off this call here i'm in a zoom meeting with the guys who are over in qatar right now and the other part of the team who are over in who are who have just flown out to saudi arabia so yeah you know i mean and some big names you know i mean it's been endorsed by some big people the saudi saudi royal family um, the Qatar and Roy family, they're all behind this. So it's like, can you imagine like mm -hmm. little old me, I'm, I'm the head of sport and entertainment. So, yeah. So I know we're going to do some stuff together, Joe. So don't worry about that. <laughs> I, look, I look forward to it and I look forward to seeing that uh, transpire and move forward. C can we j just get a quick plug on the name of that, Spence, again? It's Meta Visionaries. And yeah, we're doing some amazing stuff right now. But like I said, you are the first person to know that Linux is on board. Because we haven't even gone to press yet. It's going to go to press in two days' time. But because you're my pal, I'm telling you anyway. Right? So, yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. It's going to be it's an exciting, exciting time. Yeah, I mean, I also got a big up um, Brett Cruz, who is, uh, who's like one of the advisors to Lennox. Like, you know, you can have a personal relationship with somebody. Um, me and Lennox have never really spoken business. We've I've helped out in the past with his, with, when I was running the foundation. But, 
we've never really done something of this magnitude this is going to be something epic and i mean epic so i mean big up uh, my brother wasim as well um he was just pestering me you gotta get on board i said you just want my black book that's what you want but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that costs money but, but Nah, so it's all good, man. It's all good. But I'm, 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 I'm joyous, man. And big up Ricardo Sims as well. So yes, yeah, we're gonna see what's gonna happen, man. Brilliant. Looking forward to seeing that happening. And uh, we ready to go into round one, Spence? I'm ready, man. I'm ready, like Freddy. Let's get it. Seconds out. Round one. So Spencer Freeran, what is your first ever fight memory? Um, my first ever fight memory wasn't is it was um my mother beating me for breaking my aunt Pinder's digital watch. In <laughs> <laughs> that my first, it wasn't even a fight; it was a beating. It was a one-sided beating. I remember I, I broke that. You got we're going back in the seventies now, Joe. Kind of we're the same age group, right? So you, you, you're you're actually like, you're actually a year my sen my senior Spencer. You're a year it. my Spencer. I, uh, you're a year it. older. But I remember it was a big thing. My my aunt Pindo, who was like my second mother, she she got a digital watch. And in those days, the digital watch was it was a red face with red red um, the lighting was red, and she had it. It was gold plated, and um. She had it in a in a she had it she had it in a little jewelry box, and she was she was like my second mother really was my second mother because I would stay with her on the weekdays and go home on the weekends, and so all my cousins were like my brothers and sisters. I grew up with them, and so she had a digital watch, and it was a big thing. So I must have been about five years old. And it was like, oh my goodness gracious, digital watch. And I'm playing with a watch and then the watch just stopped working. And I'm there shaking it, banging it, trying to, right. And it's, it's kind of crazy now, because you know what, if it was if that happened today, I must probably fix it. But I had no clue, no idea. And then my aunt came in from shopping and she went, why is my why is why is my room looking like this? And she looked in her jewelry box, and her digital watch was not working. And it was a big thing, like Lord Jesus, Lord, oh God, he mush up the watch. And my mom was at work, and check this one. She said, "This is the severity of this." She picked up the phone and rang my mom at work. And this is a weekday. She rang my mom at work on a you know I mean? on, on a landline, obviously. And I want you to realize that on a landline. My aunt's number back then was 5824742. That was her number. That's crazy, right? And, right, there was no 020, no, no, that was the number. She phones my mom's workplace and asks to speak to Daphne Ferron. And she said, the boy mush up me watch. Oh, my goodness gracious. No, my mom said, my mom just said, oh, it's your mom said, don't worry. Just send him home. Just send him home. Right? My mum leaves from work at five o'clock. She gets back. You know, we were living in Kenton. She gets back to the house in Kenton. My cousin Carol brings me home. And my mum just stood there and said, who told you to trouble the watch? And I just know a beat is coming. So I'm willing up and starting to, <laughs> I don't know, mummy. And I've got the beating of my life. That was, that weren't no fight. That was a terrible, terrible beating. But if we're talking about fights, my earliest memory of, of, of boxing is my mom that actually taught me how to box. My dad was a very placid man. He was like the husband that was always like, I'm just going to work, leave me alone. I'm paying the bills. But my mom, it was 1978, the Muhammad Ali, Leon Spinks fight. So I was four years old then. Um, and it was, it was like, that was Ali's swan song. And he lost the fight against Leon Spinks earlier in January. And then they fight again in September. September 15th, that fight was. Um, and, yeah, that was my earliest memory. A rule of watching boxing and thinking, wow. Because it was a big thing. You know what I mean? Ali won back the World Heavyweight Crown at 
36 years old. That, it was unprecedented at the time. It was like, you won, right. It'd be you unprecedented, it'd be unprecedented now, right? Still at that yeah, age. It, 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 it would be, but you know, we, we like, um, biology and physics and everything has, has, has caught up a bit, but yeah. So when Ali won back that title then, I remember because everybody was talking about it. I remember going to primary school and kids were drawing pictures of it. And, uh, and I remember I'm four or five years old and it was a big, massive thing. It was like in, do you remember, do you remember maybe you remember, do you remember Empire Road? The comedy show, it had Norman Benton in it. It had quite a few people in it. Well, it also had the guy from the Fresh Prince who was Jeffrey the Butler. Okay. He was in it as well. Okay. Right, but time, like some guy came, some, some guy went around, in the show, and he was saying, oh, can you believe it? Like, Mom Dali, as he managed to do it at, at this age, it was that big. It was massive. I think they had like 78,000 people in, in New Orleans, in the Metrodome. It was that big a fight. And Ali came out to the Star Wars theme tune. Right? It was just, yeah. So that's my earliest memory of, of boxing. But it was, that was like a kind of wow moment in heavyweight history because he became the first man ever to win the heavyweight championship three times. But yeah, that was, that was it. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing, Spence. For, for you to remember that, I mean, you're, you're known as a historian in boxing, but for you to remember that and them specific details, you know, kind, kind of give, give, gives away a little bit of a li, li, little bit why you're called the knowledge. A <laughs> just, little bit. Just a little bit. Right, in, my office, in, my, in my office, there's only one picture in there. There ain't no picture of my kids. There's just a picture of, of Muhammad Ali, which is in 1966, when he came to England to fight Henry Cooper in a rematch. Um, you remember Henry Cooper, three years prior, famously, at Wembley, floored him with that left hook, the Henry's hammer. But, um, but yeah, there's only one picture in there. There's a couple of awards that I got, but Ali's up here. So. Brilliant. Well, I'm pleased that you're in, in your office because, actually, before we started, we done we done a boxing one in season one with Coogan Cassius and he was in his bedroom with a picture of Ali behind the bed. I've seen I, that I, I was a bit worried. I was a bit yeah. worried. I've got to tell you, but I think we'll leave that there and move on to round two. Wait, I, I, I'll tell you why, because, because Ali's foot, real name was Cassius K and his name's Coogan Cassius. So that's why there's that synergy there. In the bedroom. I get it. He's the greatest of all time. He's the greatest of all time. Round two. Seconds out. Round two. What is Spencer Fearon's favourite fighter of all time? Um, you know what? I don't actually have a favourite fighter because I love boxing so much. I've got like guys of certain particular fighting styles. Obviously, you have to say Muhammad Ali because Ali transcended sport. Right, there is no, there, we ain't gonna get no, we are not gonna get a bigger iconic figure than he, somebody who stood for something, somebody who was brave to go up against the system, in especially at a time where, for the things that he was saying or doing, was like you could have lost your life. You know what I mean? You, you got to think. There was assassinations of Mark, Malcolm X, assassinations of Martin Luther King. What well, Ali was the heavyweight champion of the world and being so brazen and so braggadocio and so. You know what I mean? He's he stood up for something. He stood up for something more than the fact of um, the civil rights movement. He surpassed that because at the time of that, he was in the nation of Islam. They were into no civil rights talk. He 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 was like it was something big. Nobody can't tell me that Muhammad Ali wasn't blessed by God. And the reason why I I would say this is like you can stand up for something. And like when he lost these, his, when they stripped him with Royal Heavyweight Crown um, in 68. But for him to then come back, fight Joe Frazier in March of 71 and lose, then go on and lose in 72 to Ken Norton. And you're thinking, yeah, well, you're just, it's not the same. And then he gets a shot at the World Heavyweight title against George Foreman in October of 1974 in Zaire, Africa. And for what he stood for and the fact how he made um, being a man of colour, he made it so accessibly cool. 
Uh-huh. You know what I mean that uh-huh. yeah, like when he said like I'm I'm black and I'm beautiful, what you had to do is okay, he's a really aesthetically a, a really handsome man. But it wasn't just that, because he just he wasn't he wasn't dumb. He was a very, very deep thinker, very intellectual. And that came from the people who he was around that he was taught by. He was very close to Malcolm X, very close to Elijah Muhammad, um, he's very close to Jim Brown. You go through the whole lot, he's very, very close to Sam Cooke, who was a pioneering figure, even though he's an excellent singer but Ali was close to those guys those it rubs off you know iron sharpens iron and most like definitely we, like when we look on someone like Muhammad Ali yeah for what he stood for there is there is there is I haven't really got no one that I can say oh that, that person my hero this person was my hero uh, or the rest of it. there's a really good book by a man called Cram um, called The Ghost of Milan I would suggest that anybody who says you're Muhammad Ali fan read that book because it's actually an anti Muhammad Ali book. It's actually talking about all the bad stuff that he did. All the, you know what I mean? But to me, that made me even love him even more because it showed me that you're human. Um, right. And I appreciate anybody, you know, like people could do things. Anybody could be wrong. You could be wrong at doing stuff. Uh, he went up against the system when he refused to take the draft in, 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 the, in the 60s to go to the Vietnam War. Right? Where he famously said, no, Viet Cong never ever called me the N-word, so I'm not going. I'm not fighting your war. If I want to fight someone, I'll fight you people right here. You're my oppressors. You guys are my opposers. That, you could have been killed for saying that. Of course. Right? Right, you could have been, right. So, because of what he stood for, it's a different level of respect and love that I have for him because in a time now, you think like, we've moved on so much in the world that Nobody would have a problem for you standing up for human rights issues. But you get sports stars now and certain things are going on, certain atrocities, and they're so scared, they're vehemently scared of upsetting the next sponsor. They're so vehemently scared of upsetting the the supposed quote-unquote power structure. Here was someone who didn't give a flying F about any of those kind of things. And that's why Ali was appreciated the world over because people realise what he stood for and then after him retiring from boxing how he was loved for his humanitarian issues as well and the things that he went on that's to me makes yeah Ali up there but when I'm talking about boxing I appreciate the finer arts old time fighters like Willie Pep Gene Tunney I love those guys. I like skillsters. Those guys, and the reason why I call that those two because these were Europeans. These were uh, the, these were white Americans who had that style of boxing where it was just I'm just gonna befuddle you with skills. There was an Italian guy called Nino Locchi, another incredible defensive wizard genius, one of the greatest ever did defensively. So those guys, they're up there as well. I, I'm just uh, appreciative of, of of the sport and how the sport has evolved but i'm glad that we've got there's certain really young talents right now in america a guy called shakur stevenson he's an incredible boxer mm-hmm. i just love guys of that um you know who who encompass that so i haven't got a favorite fighter per se um but if i say like on a on a favorite like an iconic figure that'd be ali but there's so many guys sugary robson sugary leonard marvin hagler tommy hans i go through the whole list we could we, we, we could be here yeah. all day talking oh, yeah. to you on them come on Yes, sir. Spencer, great answer. We're going to go with Ali. It's going down in the books. Spencer Fearon, we're going with Ali. Round three. Seconds out. Round three. You've had your, you've had your bit of ups and downs within the sport. And when I say ups and downs, you know, I've seen you promote. I've seen you have an amazing podcast on Sky Sports which I thought was amazing. I used to tune in every week and li- listen to you. I, 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 you probably don't even know that, but I'm giving you props there. I tuned in every week religiously and listen to you. Uh, you you've been involved with uh, different charitable work over the years. You've been involved with white collar fights back in the day. Uh, gyms back in the day. Uh, yeah. Big big shout out to uh, Alan Lacey. You actually caught up for a coffee with the other week, by the way, from the Real Fight Club. Uh- I'm a guy I spoke to him two days ago. Actually caught up with Alan the, the other week. Uh, what is the biggest fight in life you've had to overcome, Spencer? Um, realistically, 
my biggest fight is a lot of people don't know this. I'm actually autistic. Um, so hence why I can remember fight dates like how I can and stuff like that. I'm actually autistic. So for that, it's kind of cool when you're doing that. Oh, you're a walking encyclopedia or boxing and all the rest of it. That's great. But um, I think dealing with autism uh, hasn't been easy on, on like, on my missus. Or, like, hasn't been easy with my children and stuff. Um, I would say that's been my biggest fight. And more so now that I can actually speak openly about it. Like, so, like, I do kind of quirky, off-key stuff on a on a on a on a regular. Um but it's kinda weird. Like my father in law, as soon as he met me, he was like, Yeah, when 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 my missus turned around and said, Oh, Spencer actually autistic, he said, Yeah, I'm gonna say I knew, I knew from Doc. But then I've had this kind of weird, it's like I'm out and speak to certain of my friends, um, or certain people who have mentored me in the past, and I'll say, Yeah, I'm actually autistic. And they say, Yeah, we knew. We could see that there was something going on there, right? So um I think that has been difficult to try and to try and fit in. That um, coupled with the fact that you know what I mean, I'm actually dyslexic as well. Um, trying to fit in there, hence why I've just learned a knack to to. You tell me something, I memorize it. It's mad. You just, anything you say to me, you, I'll, I'll memorize it. That's because I couldn't really coagulate writings and wording too well, and because of that, I just learned to memorize text but 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 you, i was going to say you're heavily read aren't you 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 you, you yeah because yeah, yeah. you, you, you i read a lot of, i read a lot of books lo loads and loads and loads of books loads of books it's very important yeah um from from young like like my 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 late father would always say to me that readers are leaders and and i, I roll with that like, it's like yeah you have to it's, it's it's imperative there is a there is a form of um what's the quotation it's like if you look at a book, the only way that you can hire, you can you can acquire higher knowledge, is by reading. Because if you look at a book and how a book is shaped, it actually looks like a bird. And when you read, you rise up. So reading is very very important, very important. And now there is no excuse not to read. There isn't because you can get audio books now. Just plug them in, and listen to them at night time. You'll memorize the book just by sleeping and listening to stuff. So off of that, off of those kind of things, then I would say, yeah, that my biggest, my biggest fight has been kind of knowing that I don't fit in. And I am kind of zany. I'm kind of quirky. I will say things that are off the cuff, um, but there's no malice behind it. I'm, that is just me. Um, so dealing with that, I reckon that's been a, that's been a big fight because I'm, I'm finally recognizing it now. Look at that. Actually, I'm 48 years old now. And now that I'm recognizing it. Um, and feel comfortable, and feel comfortable to talk about it. Which is a big thing. Yeah, yeah, right. I think there's a difference between recognizing something and being able to talk about it, right? Yeah, yeah. But the thing about it is, Joe, is like everybody, you're gonna have something in your life that you ain't gonna to feel too, too, too comfortable or open to speak about certain things. But what people don't understand is that's part of the therapy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what I'm getting right. to. Yeah. As soon as you can go and and, and speak about certain things, that people, are, okay, well, we get it, right? But you're not speaking about it to be excused. You're speaking about it because you're just being open about it. And, you know, they, and like, um, it's only a problem if you've got a problem speaking about it or you feel you feel like ashamed of certain things. And you got to think, like, I'm not. I've been through a lot in my life. Um, and I appreciate every single moment. You know what I mean? It's like, it's. I realise that everything's a blessing. Everything is a blessing. And once you realise that, then you think, like, right, I ain't got no problem with nothing. I'm cool. Um, so sometimes we, we we chase things that that ain't real. I was having this conversation today with Baba Tundi Ajayi, the trainer of, and manager of Annie Yard. And we are saying... Who you, do, who you, you currently do your podcast with, right? Yeah, the fight is right. And he was saying like, Spence, do you know how rich we are? And I was saying, yeah. He said like, he, he came to my house the other day and I walked through the door, my kids run downstairs to hug me. He said, do you know how rich we are? Um, the thing about it is this is like we we as human beings we chase things that are you know what I mean we we do because we're goal oriented but we chase things and sometimes the things that we're chasing we're saying what's the purpose of us chasing it is it to better other people's lives and if I'm chasing things if I can know that I can add value to somebody else's life that is going to make their lives better then I'm gonna I'm gonna go after that to do so but sometimes we chase things that they're just 
rubbish. Seriously, don't get twisted. It's nice to have big watches and nice houses. Yeah, I see one on your wrist right now. Right, exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you're like, oh, but five, five year waiting list, two months. Let me just big up watches of Switzerland, <laughs> and my brother Mo. All right, but what you're saying is right that 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 you you you, you would throw that in the sea to to you would put that that hug and greeting from your kids in front of that watch a million times a million times over right exactly. and that's that's Way basically I, i'm with you but, that 100 yeah. because you're you're a big family man i've always i always rated that you know always always like your missus and yeah and 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 the kids from day dot and now look at I'm, your son's a big man now like that's right. yeah, i mean you can't <laughs> you can't talk to him too hard so he strangled you no mate right? he's, he, he, he still just, gets it don't worry <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So, so it's, it's it's those it's those kind of things where like you just you realize like you know what I mean like the more gratitude that you express is the more abundance that you experience. So the biggest the biggest fight is just to be a better person than I was yesterday. And if I could do that, and that's what I'm trying to do, I always like to gauge it. Like, what was going on last month? That's why I got everything written out chronologically. Then I do that for like for for financial growth, spiritual growth. And, and physical growth. And once you do that, you, you'll see the difference. Love it. Absolutely love it, Spence. We're going to go on, speaking of inspirational stuff, which that was, we're going on to round four. Seconds out. Round four. I've seen you bust a couple of moves sometimes. Probably, I've, I've probably seen you bust a few moves in a corner. Or when you was promoting, I used to see you shake a leg when you was promoting. When you used to do the hard knock shows, because they was like they they was way before their time. They was like a they they was like a rave or a dance in they in, were. in a boxing environment. What they were <laughs> round four. What is your biggest musical inspiration and why? Biggest musical inspiration. I've got so many, so it'd be hit us with one. Say, hit us with one. I, I, present moment right today at this present moment is Kendrick Lamar I'll tell anyone just download his album you know what I mean Kendrick Lamar Kendrick Lamar is the man as far as I'm concerned like yeah his wordplay and everything I'm like I salute I just salute him more than anything embrace the story of his culture and his heritage and he's unashamedly for the culture where he just puts it down and that guy that guy that guy that guy to me there's essence of Muhammad Ali in him right now there's essence of Ali so Kendrick Lamar that's my that's my guy seriously amazing what did you think of his Super Bowl performance incredible it was wasn't it I mean yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on he's, he's a G like but but, yeah. but who he was performing alongside in in terms of uh, you know experience and the company he was keeping, oh, oh, come on, come he, on, you, he, 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 he leveled it up. That, like, he leveled it up. Yeah, cool. but he's, he, that's my eyes. I'm just gonna be right now. He's my eyes. Like, if I was to go back, I mean, there's loads. Like I love Nas. Nas is my guy. Um, you know, um, back in the day in the sound systems days, there was a um, like Tipper Irie. Philip Levi was the man. My God, my King. Everyone remembers that tune. Everybody, but like for like new age stuff right now. Right now, Kendrick Lamar. I I bow humbly to him. We salute Kendrick Lamar, and he goes in the history books for Spencer Fearon's biggest music inspiration. Right now, we're going on to round five. Seconds out. Round five. If you had to create your corner team for life, I'm looking for three people's names and why they would be in your corner. Um, I would say there was a man called Reverend Ike who was, it was before Les Brown. Rev Ike was a motivational speaker. He was actually a reverend, but Nobody could test him. And he sat down with greats. Like, all of them came from him. They all learned from him. You're looking at... Les Brown, for me, is the greatest motivational speaker on the planet today. Les Brown's about 80-odd years old. 
There's a young man called William Hollis. He's bad as well. But I would say they all learnt from Reverend Ike. All of them. All the guy that wrote, uh, what's her name? Rhonda from The, the Secret. They learnt from him. Uh, um, Bob Proctor. They all learnt from Reverend Ike on the, the power of speaking things into existence and stuff like that. So I would say in my corner, Rev Ike, definitely. All right? Well, you, you've you've, edu- Even, you've educated me there. Ne- never heard of that yeah. name. Oh, I'm telling you, just right. Rev Ike going to YouTube. Bad. He he he. Uh, who who are begging to meet him? Like um, John Lennon, Muhammad Ali. Talk- Muhammad Ali stole quotes from him. Okay. Like, Ali's quote, like, how can I lose with the stuff I use? That's not even his line. That was Reverend Ike's line. So, yeah, uh, for life, I would say Reverend Ike. Um, and then I would say um, maybe um, Marcus Garvey, um, who who was who was the who was a Pan Africanist who was actually from Jamaica, from famous St Anne's. Well, and it's weird in Jamaica we've got we've got a parish called St Anne's, and they've got a Trinity that's come from there because they got. Um, Marcus Garvey, who came from there, Bob Marley, who came from there, and you saying, Bob, right, Jamaica is not a big place. It's not even 200 miles from one end to the other. But yeah, I would say, like, those men, there was something very intrinsically spiritual in that area of St. Anne's of Jamaica. And yeah, so, but this guy, um, Marcus Garvey, was an incredible orator, and he was the one that led this Back to Africa movement. So I want him in my corner as well, and then I would say the like three people in my camp. The last person you may laugh at this, but it'd be the funds from Happy Days. I love it. I'm being real. Let's seriously. You've, let's just. Call you're it. gonna tell me you found him the coolest guy when you was young, bro. He was the coolest human being on the planet. <laughs> right when I hit the ones right you could just hit the jukebox and make it start playing don't muck around man Monday Tuesday happy days come on that the font the funds was the, the Henry Winkler does not know the impact that he had on my childhood because and I'm just keeping it 100 he was cool he was cool for a white man for me as a kid, and it weren't pretense. He was the coolest man on the planet. He was the reverberated cool. So yeah, that's my free that I've got in my corner. You, you've actually killed me with the funds. The, the first two you went real right, deep with, just... but you've balanced it out. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, that's the, I want the funds in my corner. That was the guy. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to have to get you one of them leather jackets for Christmas. Hey, hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I won't, I won't, I'm gonna hold you to that now, Joe, because I'm just being. Re- I seriously, the 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 funds was the guy. He, I'm just gonna be real. He was. He was. I. 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 I, I you, you can't say. You know, growing up in the. You know, being born in the seventies, you you didn't hear hear that of a Saturday morning and it not put a smile on your face. Exactly. That was. Listen. That was a TV show. That was. It was just. Uh, that was. Yeah. It was excellent. And like, yeah, I I don't care what anyone else wants to say. The Fonz was the guy. Spencer Fearham, it has been lovely having you on the Fight Mad podcast. You'll put a smile on my face today. And I thank you. Uh, what have you got coming up? Well, obviously, we've spoke about one of the things you've got coming up. Is that is that that's your main your main focus right now? The, the, main, the, main, the main focus is, is at this present moment, it is that I'm working on some really, really big projects abroad. So I'm very, very grateful. And we've got a couple young talents that are coming through right now. We've got an eye on this young heavyweight. And I believe with with Tundi doing his bit, me doing my bit, and we've got older head in James Cook, I believe that this kid could surpass anything that Andy Joshua or Tyson Fury has done. And people think that's a, that's a lot. But I'm just saying, I just, you know, when you, certain stars align, 
I just believe this is the this is the kid that's going to do something really really special without me putting pressure. That's a, that's... I'm not going to call his name because if I call his name, he knows who he is. I'm definitely... He knows he knows who he is, and obviously that's a, that's yeah, a big yeah. statement from you. Yeah. Was... If every if every sparring in, in 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 East or South, let me know. I'd love to come and see him. Yeah, I'm telling you, you I gonna think... see this kid. We're just I've... we're just starting things right now, but and I just believe that's a that's a lovely it's a lovely time in a journey as well to be able to identify someone and go. You know what? This this, this well, person is gonna is is gonna get there. Yeah, I mean, you, you and I did that with with Dylan White. Must have. So, right, you did that with Dylan White. So, and and fair play and props to kid for going Dylan White going to where he's got to and ended up challenging for a world title and becoming a household name and a millionaire to boot, which is a very very joyous thing. Um, to to to, but I think this kid here, if Tundi does what he does, which I believe that he can do, I do what I do. James Cook does what he does. I think we're looking at a very very big star. And the difference is this: in boxing, there you know what they say: if you want loyalty, get yourself a dog. There isn't really that loyalty, but in this here, it's kind of a different mechanics, a different mechanics. So, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm humbly sitting back and in, 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 in waiting in anticipation to what's going to happen. I can hear the excitement in the voice. Spencer, it's been lovely having you on. Ladies and gentlemen, Spencer Fearon, make sure you hit that subs- subscribe button. The Fight Mad podcast available on all good podcast platforms and YouTube. Also, give us a follow at Fighters Inc. Spencer, lovely to see you. Catch you soon.